childhood obesity and obesity later in adulthood are associated. That means if a child is obese, the risk is higher that the adult also is obese. And during your lecture, you advocated a lot of this is, has to do with early nutrition, breastfeeding period. Let's start up with breastfeeding. Does long-term breastfeeding protect from excessive weight gain? Thank you for the question. Yes, it's true. Uh, overweight and obesity in childhood predicts um, obesity in adulthood, but it depends on the age of the child. If you have a child that is overweight before the age of obesity rebound, before the age of about five years, then the association is weak. If you look at the association at school age and adolescence, the association becomes strong. So I think the important predictor is overweight in school age and beyond where we need to focus on and we need to be a bit careful in terms of looking at weight at one or two years as a strong predictor. With respect to breastfeeding, we have a lot of studies that show a protective effect of breastfeeding on later obesity. Some studies don't show it. The difficulty is that all the studies are observational studies, and breastfeeding is closely associated with a number of confounding factors. Usually, families who choose to breastfeed and to breastfeed long have a higher education, have a higher income, have less smoking, are generally more health conscious. And even if we just for that, we have usually some residual confounding. So I think we will never ever be able to answer the question with certainty, is it really breastfeeding or is it con uh, confounding factors? But I would say, you know, it's the same with smoking. We don't have a single randomized control trial that shows smoking induces lung cancer. Yes, we are convinced by the l uh, evidence from epidemiological study that it's prudent not to smoke. And I think we have not only for obesity, we have also for other outcomes a lot of good arguments why we should promote and protect breastfeeding. So the duration is important, the duration of breastfeeding. One month of breastfeeding probably has less effect than six months or nine months. Is this correct? This is what a number of the observational studies show. One meta-analysis by Harder reports with each added month of breastfeeding, the population prevalence is reduced by 4% of later overweight and obesity. Um, so that's um, suggesting longer breastfeeding uh, would have a greater protective effect. We have little evidence that in matters of whether it's exclusive or partial breastfeeding, that is not clear cut in the data. But again, we have to be a bit careful in over-interpreting the data because there is confounding. I think the randomized trial showing that lower protein protects against uh, obesity is really supporting the conclusion that breastfeeding matters because it sort of replicates the breastfeeding intervention. From breastfeeding to complementary feeding, the weaning food, does it matter when you start up and how much you give? Is weaning food increasing the caloric intake in infants? Is this good, bad, or doesn't, uh, is there no effect? Well, in the, in the European CHOP study, when we analyze the data of more than 1,000 infants, we see that those infants who get solids have a higher energy intake than the children who don't get solids. But when we look at the timing of solid introduction, we don't see a simple cause-effect relationship to weight gain or later obesity risk. There's an interaction between solid introduction and growth, but it's far more complex than a A to B relationship. The really exciting finding that we have is that those children who get complementary feeding earlier had a higher energy intake before they got complementary feeding. It is basically suggesting that those infants who are hungry, who are not satisfied with a certain amount of milk, in one way or another signal to their parents, I'm ready for something more, and they get complementary feeding. Okay. Let's move now to the developing world. 80% of the infants are born in developing countries where obesity is also a problem. Does the same apply in developing countries as far as breastfeeding concer is concerned and complementary feeding, or would you say it in a different way? 
Well, in, in low-income countries, obviously, breastfeeding and long breastfeeding is even more important than in affluent countries because the challenge is meeting nutrient needs, the challenge is from hygienic issues, from infections, gastroenteritis are even greater. So there, the role of breastfeeding promotion is clearly even more important. Um, complementary feeding in low-income countries is in a way a double-edged sword because the moment you introduce complementary feeding, you may increase the risk of infection if hygienic practices are not good, if the food quality is not good. On the other hand, in low-income countries, in children with low birth weight, there is particular challenges in meeting, meeting micronutrient needs and complementary feeding, timely complementary feeding, becomes extremely important in, for example, preventing iron deficiency. So from your studies and the literature, it can be said the first two years of the birth are very important for later development in terms of obesity prevention, uh, have the right feeding, rest feeding, in case this is not possible, have low protein formulas, and hopefully this will be the environment which is uh, now given by Codex in the future. Do you see a chance that the regulatory environment will change? Well, you summarized it very well. The first two years of life are really important for uh, lifelong health, and nutrition is one key element here. It's not the only one, but one key element. So we better invest in the best possible early nutrition, emphasizing breastfeeding, and emphasizing quality and timely complementary feeding, and those children that are not fully breastfed um, have quality breast milk substitutes. Uh, regulatory agencies are very important. It's a complex discussion. We have to currently at Codex Elementarius a standard for follow-on formula from 1987, which is not matching our current scientific knowledge. So it's time to really move forward okay. in this direction. Let's hope that legislation moves forward and follows science. Thank you very much. Thank you.